My name is Aisha Corpus Wynn. I am an executive producer, uh, entrepreneur, and consultant. I am also the CEO of A Win Win Productions and the co-founder of Four Henry's Productions. Hey, it's DMA from Planet DMA. I'm here with Aisha Corpus Wynn, and we're going to do a reality check. Okay, Aisha, here are the rules. I'm going to say uh, a word or ask a question, and you have two seconds. First answer that comes into your head. Okay. Okay? Okay. You ready? Yes. The most important app on your phone is? My phone app. Do you actually use it? You call people still in 2015? <laughs> Can you text with the phone app? <laughs> no, that's the message app. Okay. The most important tool for managing your time is? My calendar app. <laughs> And what is this iCal, is this Google Cal, what calendar is happening here? iCal, yes. You to, oh, iCal. yes. So you are, so I, I don't need to ask, you know, iOS or Android? Oh, <laughs> iOS. <laughs> Did you I'm, order I'm, the Apple Watch? I'm, I'm Apple all the way. Apple all the way. Yay. Yeah. Okay, see, I'm Android all the way, so I already have a smartwatch. Okay. <laughs> it did not cost me $10,000. Okay, fantastic. All right, if you had to choose between a higher title... Okay. Or boosting your rate. <laughs> but you could only do one. Yeah. Which would you choose and why? I would choose boosting my rate. <laughs> um, because for me, I think that in my industry, um, quality speaks for itself, despite if you have the title or not. Um, and the people that you're working with know the quality of your work. Okay. And so... Networking for future jobs is an important element, and if the people that you're networked with are in a network with know the quality of your work, that will help solidify future jobs, which will come with the future pay and I mean future title and things of that nature. But um, for the essential elements of what I want to do in life, what I want to do when I'm not at work, <laughs> like it's about the money right. and, and the rate. Right. Um, and it can be much harder to get the rate to go up job after job. Exactly. Then the title easier, I think, than money. Exactly. Exactly. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, credit list or resume? I like credit list, but I'm going to say resume. And the reason why is because the resume um, really breaks down the duties and the skill sets of what that person um, does. Responsible for. Exactly, exactly. Where a credit list, um, you could technically get a credit on something, but not really do anything. So um, I think I think resumes, um, you know, just require a little bit more substance and a little bit more understanding of the person's skill set and and responsibilities. Um, and there's a lot of people who have lower credits, but their responsibilities were a lot more than the title of their credit. Mm -hmm. And um, and that person could technically be qualified for a, a higher position or a different position because of their experience and, and level of responsibility. Um, so I would say resume. Let me ask, would you make a distinction such as credit list is fine for you, but if you were hiring, you want a resume? Correct. Yes. Correct. Yes. That's what I'm hearing. It, that makes sense. Yes. Yes. For, yes. for hiring, mm -hmm. um, resume is definitely the, the way to go. But if okay. it's something, if it's more for like publicity or someone needs a bio, things of that nature, then a credit list. Got it. Yeah. What is the biggest fear you've ever overcome? Wow. Um... I would say exposing myself, putting myself out in front of public. Uh, like this event that you're, yes, <laughs> that yes, you're organizing. Yeah, well, you know, doing a podcast, um, uh, putting, yeah, like promoting myself, uh, pushing, uh, doing, putting together an event where my picture and my name and things are attached to it. I'm so used, my whole entire career has been behind the scenes yes. and working um, behind a a title of a show or a, or a show, a bigger show runner or a network. Mm -hmm. And so those, I'm used to that getting the publicity, not necessarily me. Mm -hmm. And so that's, I would say, the biggest fear. And then also, too, you, when you put yourself out there, by default, you have to be okay with judgment because people are going to judge, even if you're asking, even if you're not asking for judgment. <laughs> that's just, it's just human nature. People... 
uh, take on some sort of critique or position of whatever they're seeing visually or, or listening to. So I think I've been doing that a lot more lately. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm just rolling, going with the flow. Nice. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's flip it. What is the innate trait about you that is most responsible for your success? Oh, this is a good one. I know I'm supposed to like only give myself a split second. A split second. Yes, <laughs> okay. you can't think it through. So, so the first word that came to my mind is due diligence. Nice. Okay. Due diligence. Yeah. Do explain. <laughs> okay. So I do my due diligence on every facet of whatever I have going on. Mm -hmm. um, if it's a, if it's working on developing a, a concept, um, I am not only just focusing on the creative, but I'm also thinking about the demographic and the viable buyers. And I do research on what other shows have been out there and is the demographic that I think will watch the show, what are they really into? It's like doing, doing your homework on whatever it is that you have going on. Um, like with this event that I have coming up, it's like doing my homework on uh, who, who would be great speakers to, to be involved in this? Um, what other events are similar like this? What other events are happening the same week as my event? I mean, you want to have all, all of those, uh, th all of that knowledge. Therefore, you know that the steps that you're doing um, are in the best interest of yourself, the project, your teammates, whatever it is that you have going on. Um, even in relationships, it's, you know, it, it just applies to really everything um, in that you're giving it your all and that you're giving it full attention, full focus, and that you're covering all the parameters of it because it's very, very easy to just get caught up in one in one of the minute aspects yes. of of a pro of a project or an assignment or a job. And um, I not only focus on things on a micro level but on a macro level. And I think that's where my my due diligence in everything I'm doing really helps my success. Right. It's like you lay that foundation. If it, there's a marathon coming up. You don't just wake up, put your shoes on, and run the 26 miles. Like, okay, I need to stretch. I need to check my diet and exercise. And exactly. And I think that you know, just with that that um, metaphor that you use with the marathon, it's like, yeah, sure, you could wake up and just decide to run the marathon, and maybe you'll finish it. <laughs> you but it, it could take you <laughs> way longer right. than if you had done your homework. <laughs> yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. It, you have a higher success probability. Yes. Yes. Got and it. my standard, I think that's part of the reason why um, doing your due diligence on things is so key is because my standards for success are high. Like even, even within everybody else's standards for success, someone's like, oh, let's sell out this event. My goal is, okay, let's sell out this event and have people already on standby for the <laughs> next event. Like I'm, I just have that natural overachiever um, aspect of my personality that I've had since I've been a kid. Well, I, I always call myself an optimizer. Maybe I would call you a maximizer. Oh, yes. That's They're a good complimentary, way to put it. but they are different things. <laughs> yes. 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 I love that. Okay. So... Would you call it overachieving given that it's not actually a stress for you? It's really overachieving relative to what others standard, other people's standards of achievement would be? Or do you think even for you, you know you're pushing yourself? Well, I, the reason why I say it over, overachievers because I'm normally setting really high standards at things that I've never done before. <laughs> So, um, so that's where it comes into play. Like okay. at the time, I'm give you that. like at the moment of when I set the goal, yeah. I'm overachieving. When I decided to start my own production company with my business partner, we were like, we want to get shows on the air. We didn't, we, we, it wasn't like, okay, let's try our, our goal wasn't let's try to partner up with the studio, yeah. like things of... Let's get some great meetings. Yeah. Let's get some high-level yeah. pitch exactly, meetings. Exactly, exactly. Right. Like some people, they're like, oh, I just want to get some pitch meetings. I, like their goals tend to be um, smaller milestones where like we were starting the company, we were like, okay, well, we want to get show sold. And we did it and, you know... You within, did it instantly. Yeah, yeah. Within the yeah. first, which is rare, but within the first year and a half, we had, you know, two shows sold without an agent. Yes. Things of that nature that people say, oh, you have to have in order to be successful. But I think part of that was because I had set... The the bar so high that even if I felt short, it was still high. Yeah. yeah. Accomplishment. Yeah. Accomplished. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Okay. Reality show you wish you had created. Oh, well, the timing of this is so perfect. <laughs> um, I wish I created lip sync battle. 
Pods Epic on, on Spike TV. Absolutely. That show is genius. Awesome. It's genius. And the reason why I say that is that shows genius because you could have done lip sync battle a hundred different ways. But the format and the way that they set it up is genius. I love that. I love that. 